So by way of refresh, we should already have the necessary text files in place from our previous class. And what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at that. Um, what we discovered in our collab3.txt from our last analysis, after we were able to run the JavaScript and decode the JavaScript, we saw that there was still a little bit more encoding happening. And we also saw something that looked like it might be an executable, some kind of shell code that we could then launch inside of our Acrobat reader to take over the machine. We're going to try and take a look at that today. All right. There are a couple of different ways of using the tools we're going to use. We're going to use, just like we used x64 debug to debug x64 code, we're going to use something called shell code debugger or scdbg to decode what we think is happening inside the shell code um, malware that we think we have discovered. We're not there yet, but that's what we're going to use. As I had mentioned, um, there's a couple of different ways of using this. We can use it inside of Remnux. Remnux actually has um, the ability to run Windows programs pretty easily, and it's nothing new. There's a couple of ways of doing it. In this case, we're going to use something called Wine or Windows Emulator, Win Emulator, Windows Emulator to run our executable. Um, it's very tricky to get up and running, but it's set up well enough or it will be set up well enough for us to do this here. So what we're trying to prevent when we do our analysis is that we have to fire up our Flare VM, connect it to Remnux, download the shell code that we're going to discover into our Windows environment, fire up the, the um, shell code debugger, and take a look at the results here. Now we can do this. Please understand that we can set all of this up. And if you want to, go ahead. And more importantly, if you are um, not able to get this working in Remnux, you're going to have to do this. So I've left those notes inside of today's lecture notes. But I want to make it a little easier. What we're going to do is after we have decoded our code from ScriptMonkey and captured it, what we want to do now is continue our analysis and do all of the static analysis inside of Remnux. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Okay. To that end, I have created a separate instance of Remnux. And the only reason I did a separate instance of Remnux for today's class is so that I could show you the startup process again. I have a PDF directory. In my PDF directory, oh, let's remove that first. All right. I have a PDF directory, and in my PDF directory, I have the necessary files. All right. I have collab. I don't have collab 2, but that's fine because I have collab 3. And as we saw, collab and collab 2 are basically the exact same file. And what we are interested in is this collab 3.txt because when we took a look at that file, we saw some interesting code in it. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger and I'm going to zoom in in my font and then I am going to wrap my text. Now when we took a look at this collab 3, which was the result of running it through the JavaScript tool and capturing the results, that JavaScript tool of course was SpiderMonkey. Once we ran this against SpiderMonkey, against the JS command, it gave us this results. We then captured these results to collab3.txt. Okay. As we take a look at this, we see there is something here, collect email info, collab.collect email info. This is a known vulnerability, and it's also a kind of an indicator that we might have some shell code happening here. We also have something else going on here. We have some kind of weird encoding happening with this block right here. And you can see it's doing an unescape function. And then it has percent %u, percent %u, percent %u. So it has a whole bunch of encoded text here. 
and that encoded text is identified by the percent %u. The percent indicates a percent type encoding. All right, this is what we're seeing here. Now, it's probably some kind of an overflow that uh, collab um, collect email info. But we also have the percent use, and then we have a bunch of what looks like bytecode below it. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to understand what this vulnerability is. And in the real world, because I like trying to have this as real world as possible, um, I need to make sure I didn't screw something up. So just give me one sec, please. Okay, good. Downloading like a two and a half gig repository of malware, and I don't want to mess that up. Okay. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yes. So, um, in the real world, if you came across this, and if you did some research specifically on this valid vulnerability, this collab.collectionemailinfo, or anything that you discovered that was unusual inside of your PDF document, and it referenced an old vulnerability exploiting an old version of PDF Reader that you know your organization doesn't use anymore, you probably don't have anything to worry about. If you want to analyze it further, of course. But in the real world, this is an old vulnerability. You would hit this point and say, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I know none of our clients are going to have to worry about that. But for today's academic exercise, let's say that this is a new vulnerability and there's a chance it might impact what you're doing in your organization. To that end, you're going to want to try and decode it and understand what's going on, okay? These payloads are often Unicode. You can use decoders to convert these back into something we can understand, but we need to understand what kind of Unicode it is. The percent is an indicator that it is percent Unicode, what we call percent Unicode or PU which is another unfortunate word that we have. There's a lot of these this week, the PPDF, the PU encoding. But we can use this base64 dump.py statement to decode this percent unit code encode text and see what it tells us. So that's what we're going to do. If you haven't already done so, open up your Remnux, go to your terminal, Zoom in a little bit more. And um, we are going to decode that information. One sec here. I have to move it off to the side here so I can see what exactly how to type it in because I don't always remember. So ls-al, and then I want to type in base64. Um, dump.py dash encoding pu and then I want to take a look at collab 3.txt because that's the one that has that percent unicode encoding and when I tell it to do that it comes up with three different again three different sections within the document now these aren't the objects that we saw when we took a look at the raw PDF. These are interpreted sections that it has come across in the document. And there are three. We could take a look at all three. However, the first one is the one that has the largest data. That's the one we want to take a look at. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to do it again. But this time, I'm going to look at section one. And I'm going to tell it to decode it as well. And when I do that, it shows me something again that looks an awful lot like it might be compiled binary code. Having discovered that, I am then going to redirect my results to a binary file that I can capture. I'm going to call this one collab-out.binary. Okay? You can call it whatever you want. I don't care. In the lecture notes, I called it collab out the binary, all right? And it is 420 bytes in size. We can do a sanity check. And again, it looks like it has my binary code in it. Are there any questions?
if you had your questions up or if you had some, said something in the chat, I might have missed it. Okay, everybody's there. Perfect. Um, any questions? All right, let's move on. Now that we've got that information, oh, and I show that on this slide as well, how, do you, how you get there. There's the indication of the uh, percent Unicode text. I then dump section one out to collaboutbin and now I have a collaboutbin. Now, as I was saying when I first started today, at this point, you can say, hey, I'm going to push this information to um, my Flare VM, or I can open up IDA and try and take a look at it inside of Remnix. Now, we haven't talked about IDA, and I'm hoping we'll have time, but I don't think we're going to have time to take a look at IDA free. It is as big, it is larger and more, I think, unwieldy than X64 debug. So we're just going to continue alternative tools, but if you ever want to look at a real professional tool, take a look at IDA. It's what a lot of industry people use. I am going to try and incorporate it into this class in one of the iterations in the future, but I'm not there yet. All right. We could use X64 debug, but again, it's overkill for what we need. We have shell code. And there is a shell code debugger called SCDBG. And we could use that to take a look at our what we suspect to be shell code. This shell code debugger is available on Remnux, and we can use it. Unfortunately, the first time it has to go through a setup, it should work. It's a little quirky, it's a little buggy, but we've seen these quirky features in hacking tools in the past. We need to understand that. If you can't get it working, I have included the instructions. The uppercase D is the one that you can find on Flare. And I've given you all the instructions here as to how to do it. But I'm pretty sure on slides 13, 14, and 15, you should have the necessary instructions to do this on Remnux. Let's take a look at that together, shall we? First off, on Remnux, the first thing I want you to do is to simply type in SCDBG. Don't do the ampersand, please. Um, just run it the first time, and it's going to create a directory structure for wine. And this is the screen capture I had in Learn. It's basically saying, hey, I'm setting up a wine directory for you because it uses wine. It uses this Windows emulator. So it's telling you that it is doing it. We get some HTML rendering errors. Don't worry about it. That's out of scope. We don't need to worry about that. As I mentioned here, it complains about some rendering HTML stuff. Don't worry about that. What I do want you to do is, do you want to allow it to um, register SC files? That's fine. And then it'll open up this debugger utility, okay? Again, we're still running it in the background. And this is one of the things that often happens with emulators. We saw the exact same thing when we took a look at DOSBox to try and run the um, iCar virus way back week one or week two, whatever that was, when we were running that real simple iCar virus and we launched DOSBox, it did the same thing. It gave us a fake drive letter, in this case Z, and then it's just doing a bunch of stuff in that environment. What we want to do is click on the ellipsis, and then we want to go to whatever directory. Now, we were in PDF, so it puts us in PDF. If you're not in PDF, go to your folder, Remnux, open up the PDF directory, and select uh, collab-out.bin, the file that we just created, and click on Open. It will go through, it'll try and understand happening with it, but more importantly, when we click on launch, it will try and run it within Windows. So once you have set up SCDBG and the Wine environment, after you have loaded it inside of SCDBG, you can simply click on launch. And it will try very hard to launch. And this is what we're looking for. This is the information that tells us what this shell was going to do. It was going to go to this IP address, 
and it was going to download this file. It's going to call this file wjqs.exe and then it was going to execute wjqs.exe. Everybody see that? Are there any questions? So again, I launched my launcher. I opened my malware. It kind of added that fake wine directory and drive structure to it. But then when you click on launch, it'll actually run through and try and run that shell code. So you can understand what's going on. You can add this to the environment so that you can go and see if anybody has wjqs.exe running in their environment, as we see here. Okay, and um, one more thing. When you click on the file and you navigate through the Linux file system, it converts it into this quasi windows c colon backslash but it's z z colon backslash and then home rem next pdf and then whatever you called that binary that you extracted when you ran the the debug uh, statement base64 dump dot py are there any questions does that make sense okay at this time, I want you to be able to go through and demonstrate all of this. You can use Remnux and Flare together, but as you can see, it's quite a bit easier to do everything in Remnux. It will make your report easier to write, and it'll make your competency easier to complete as well, if you just have everything available in Remnux. Go ahead, generate a new report, the same structure that we've used in the past, um, the parts that talk about executables don't really matter, but you can fill in as many artifacts as necessary. And when you're done, do your competency on the PDF document. Okay? I'm going to give you the rest of today and the class that we have on Friday. The rest of this week is to work on this competency. Some of you are caught up and you're going to be done very quickly. That's fine. Some of you take advantage of this time and get caught up with your competencies. Okay, I'm going to stop this recording now.